thought Gloria Steinem was in the community, but she isn't. She's not. She's straight. I wish that she was. Yeah, I feel like she she dabbled in the lady pool for sure. She definitely dabbled. I feel. Most listen, I feel like any healthy person experiments just you know a little bit. There you go. You didn't know from it now? was the sixties and seventies. Everyone hot. was experimenting with everything. So hot. everybody was high and experimenting. It was a better time. Exactly. Oh, now I we're just would... high and depressed. Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators and a space where we share our stories on all things queer related. Hey guys, special episode with uh, the boys. We got Elise and Shay on today. We're gonna do a little update for you guys. Talk a little bit about fucking Women's History Month and just talk about our lives. We got a few stories and uh, yeah, let's let's fucking do it. Y'all, it's one year of COVID. Did you guys realize it? Like I, I realized it when someone on TikTok posted like this time this year, I was listening to all of these songs and it was like all the nostalgic old like TikTok songs from last year. It's been a fucking year. The only reason I know is because last March when I, I went on spring break with my friends and like, wow, we were on spring break, the entire country shut down. And so like, I came back, job was no longer in the office, like no, no idea how to do anything. It was the same time last year and we're going again this year. So I do, I did recognize it's, it's the one year anniversary. So I guess happy anniversary. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That's the same thing that happened to me. I went on spring break and I came back and it was like, the state was shut down. And I was like, and my new job that I had just got in, I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'm not going into work anymore. Holy shit. I just got a new job too this time last year that I fucking quit. I just quit that recently, <laughs> which is a funny story. But um, yeah, I literally had a job for like not even a month. So I was still in training. And then I spent most of that job working from home. So it was just mostly shit the whole month or the whole year. I literally just finished trading when mine did, but I mean, it was H and M. So like they weren't going to be open. I couldn't telework. True. But Wait, yeah. did you get that hoodie at Target? No, I got this at uh, TJ Maxx. I'm a Maxinista. Maxinista. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Let's get it. I will say TJ Maxx has a much better uh, selection of like young people clothing. They've stepped uh, up the game. And Marshall's Marshall's is a little rough on like, it is. At least the one near me. It, it's very, here's, it's like, here's some blouses. Here's like some jeggings. I'm like, how many pairs of jeggings does a person need that we're still carrying this many pairs in 2021? True. But maybe that's just me. Marshall's has some good Calvin Klein underwear though, I will say. At least the one that I went, the guy I go to. I, they, I didn't know they sell somewhere. underwear. Yeah, TJ Maxx too. For some reason that doesn't sit right with me. Like I know it's, it's different than like Goodwill. But for some, it still doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> Brand new. No one's fucking yeah. worn them. I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's something about underwear. I feel like it needs to, it needs to come from like the main store for me to be like, yeah, I'll, I'll put this on my ass. I'm trying to get my Calvins on a budget. Other than going yeah. to like the Calvin outlet. True. You know what I um, saw? It was like, uh, I forget what it was, but it was on TV. And it was basically like, what you think of outlets is like, oh, they're getting discounted stuff from the original store and they're discounting and putting the outlet. No, they make it specifically for the outlet. Like they so make it for the outlet it? and they make you think that it's a discount. When in reality, yeah, they literally make this stuff specifically. It's not like stuff that's like out of season or like whatever. Because it's always good stuff. It's not like it's the clearance section. I always thought it was like clearance section of like the originals and they just like, it was like bulk. It's not. They specifically make them. For the Why is it such good because, shit then? I, I've been dragging my ass out to Danger Outlets for years. I don't yeah, know. Like I've, gone, I've gone to the like Vans outlet in North Carolina and it's the same quality shoe and that it would be if I got them at like Journeys or I'm an actual just, van store. I was devastated when I couldn't go to the Vans outlet with you guys. That I was a really wish, sad day. I wish that you would have came and I didn't have to have that embarrassment. I Ralph Lauren. Was he there? <gasps> no, but uh, someone, <laughs> putting and, someone putting their, uh, stealing a mask from the store and putting it into their pants was. Was Rachel Ew. Green there? Because she did work at Ralph Lauren for a certain period of time. No, it just seemed to be like Karen's. So I don't know. I know Ashley Green, but that's just Rachel I Green. I know a from Friends. I know Ashley Green. Uh, 
Oh, <laughs> missed missed franchise God. for me. Was never into yeah. it. I've watched it, but I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. Friends will, Friends never did it for me. They didn't do it. it for me either. Yeah. I was obsessed, but I was late obsessed. All of my friends were obsessed with it in high school, beginning of college. My roommate had it on DVD, like the whole DVD set before it was on Netflix. And finally, I got around to watching it because they kept quoting and saying, you would love this. You would love this. Like, you love movies and TV shows and quoting. Like, And I would always get mad that I didn't understand what they were talking about. And I thought it was stupid. Why would I watch a 90s movie? That's the dumbest shit ever. Like, the 90s? Like, what the hell? And then I watched it, and I was like, oh, my God. And I watched it three times, all 10 seasons, fucking three times in a row. Bitch, so. you were made in the 90s. What? <laughs> I know. We're both nice. We're all 90s. <laughs> Four when it started, though. I think it started in 94 and 95. But I, do, I don't know. Like, at the time, I was like, why would I watch anything that's in the 90s? Like, I don't know. I just thought it was, like, I couldn't relate. And I was like, they are literally in their mid-20s. How could I not relate? I mean, Sex in the City was better than Friends. I never got into Sex in the City. Is it Sex in the City or Sex and the City? Sex and the City, I think. But it had Sarah Jessica Parker in it. There I had to live out my... Sarah Jessica Parker and with my hocus pocus obsession of her with her titties on the broomstick I had to watch it I like the one chick with the blonde hair that has sex all the time she's like very like yeah that's Sarah Jessica Parker no it's the other one it's the oh 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 Samantha Samantha yes Samantha's my girl you would be a Samantha I feel like saying you're such a Samantha is both simultaneously like the straightest and gayest thing that you can say. <laughs> okay, but if they were lesbians, you would be Samantha. I'm not anymore, though. I've like stopped. You've graduated. I graduated. I'm a college gay now. I don't know. I like I, I've, I'm out of the whole phase. I think for good. I like don't have any inclinations to want to just uh, meet a bunch of people. I'm like ready to settle down. Isn't that crazy? Love that during a global pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Love sorry. that energy. What do you want from me? I literally, beginning of the pandemic, was freshly single, ready to mingle. I wanted to go out there and just sow my fucking oats. And I'm sorry, but I did it. And now I'm ready to stop. I had more relationships in a pandemic than I did prior. I think it's just because it was slim picking anyway for anybody. So, like, sadly, I was probably just the best option for some people. And I filled that gap. I feel like I also did that, but not in a relationship sense. Everyone was just ready to fucking burst. And I was like, hey, um, I will help you with that if you you need it. And I was there. I was just the the one that was there. (laughs) You were the friendly handyman. Just trying to help y'all with your leaky pipes. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> that sounded a lot grosser than I think it was supposed to. I, think, I also just pictured it like leaky, disgusting pipes. <laughs> okay, well, what the fuck else was I supposed to say? But uh, yeah, I'm done. I'm done with fucking around. Back on the dating apps. I've been off dating apps for like three months, y'all. We love that are for they, you. Are, I haven't had are they even months. good anymore? I don't, I don't know. know. I just did that ad like a couple weeks ago that they asked me to do and they haven't paid me so i don't really feel bad saying this like i i've never used they've asked me multiple times and like the only times that i used it was when i lived on the west coast because it was bigger on that side of the country like when i lived in washington yeah i hate all dating apps if we're gonna be honest i don't use dating apps they gross me out a little bit it's kind of just like presenting a resume and just like whatever it's like sure this is okay it's like trying to get a job at like mcdonald's and like you're just getting like the very like terrible you're the like, fucking dollar menu. Damn, you're getting the dollar they, menu they, literally getting the dollar menu i'm at least panda express don't call me mcdonald's <laughs> i'm not calling you mcdonald's I, I don't know i just don't like the idea of it honestly like yeah just here's here's some pictures of me here's a couple quips do you want to fuck me yeah Ugh. that's literally hey, what it uh, is i'm like can, can we at least yeah. like get to like what's your middle name like i i have re-entered and i am not happy about it 
I literally went on it and I was like, just, I updated all of my information and then just let it sit for three days. I like put it on pause. I updated everything, paused it. I was like, fuck this. I don't want to do this. And then I got back on it and I was like, I'll do a couple matches, whatever. And it was just stupid. There's people who still use Snapchat filters on their fucking bios. Like, I hate it. I hate it. Like, I absolutely hate it. If you have one, I'll let it slide. If you have two, I don't swipe. Like their swipe. first picture is with like a group of people. They are definitely the least cute out of the group. And that <laughs> is so oh, come on. Oh, come on. Hey. When, you, when you go to the next picture, you're like, that's so I thought bad. it was this cute one in the picture, but it never is. It never is. Here's my thing. And well, I'm on not, the feminism. I don't. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how do we the switch the feminism? Jesus. On that? I would never like judge someone based on their looks, but I would judge them based on their confidence. You can totally tell when people are hiding. And that's why I don't and like Snapchat where... filters. And I don't like group photos. Like have a couple, show your friends off or whatever, you know, but like make it known that it's you from the jump. When I was doing the ad though, I had to like re-download Tinder and like edit my profile to like make the gag. And so I was like, the people that are seeing this right now, are probably so confused like I for the gag I had to change my gender to a male it was me holding a cartoon fish with like my dad's <laughs> fishing hat like me and my best friend who is also gay like asking you and Mason film. like it was, yeah <laughs> like it's just like yeah. the people are, that are seeing this are they got to be so confused by what is happening on my profile right now how did you not get paid for that I'm more of like a I might get paid. I don't know. <laughs> Gotta go. Get to get that bread. This is why I don't believe in astrology. <laughs> why? Capricorns are supposed to be like super like money and business oriented. And I, I truly couldn't care less. I don't know if it's money and business. It's like meticulous, disciplined. Have you seen my depression cave? Okay. It's depression, yes. not your personality. <laughs> How's Virginia been? Is it Virginia or North Carolina? Vir- Virginia. Virginia. It's it's, it's Virginia. been uh it's been warm. Yeah. Uh it snowed once and then they had like an ice storm. They didn't know what to do with it. And I found it very funny. It's interesting to see like when it's like 60 degrees out, she'll be like, oh my gosh, it's like freezing out. And I was like, this is literally summer. Like, what do you mean it's cold? Like you want to wear like two sweatshirts. And I'm like, I'm ready to wear short sleeves right now. Yeah, how's marital but bliss the- treating you? <laughs> how is ma- how you is pretty much you all to move to fucking Virginia? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I mean, it's it, it's not too bad. I I I definitely like the weeks better when uh, the child is not here because we actually like get to go out and like be adults. Yeah, I am um, not having a fun time dating. I. Like I said, I like re-downloaded everything and ugh, I went on a, a date. This is so bad. This person does not have social media, by the way. So they're not probably going to hear this, but like. Kudos to them though. That's, that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. But just, just wait, just wait. You'll understand. Um, <laughs> so oh, no, this is not promising. <laughs> So we're chatting, you know, over dating app or whatever. And I kind of like people that are like a little weird, not like weird, weird, but like weird, quirky, like blah, 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 you know? And I like people who are like straight up and straightforward and stuff like that. And like, she was all those things. And I was like, okay, like, it's cool. You know, she wanted to meet at a place that was like three minutes away from my house. I was like, sweet. I don't have to go that far. She's going to pay. I need to get out of the house. And I, at first I was excited. And then I was like, kind of like, it got to the point where, I had said yes, we had like a time date, everything. And then she started telling me more stuff like oversharing. And I was like, "Mm." and not just like oversharing, just like, I don't know, like it just kept getting a little bit weirder. And I was like, yeah, this is probably going to turn out bad, but like, I still need to get out of the house. And I kind of want Indian food. And so I'm fucking- I'm worried this is going to turn into like some sort of like, and she was in a cult. Like, yeah. no, it's gonna, it's still fucking weird. You gotta wait for it. Um, so, you know, and like while she was sharing, you know, like after the, I, I said, yeah, let's go on a date or whatever. She was like, hey, just let you know, like I had to move in back into my parents. 
I, things are like really new to me right now. Um, I was diagnosed with epilepsy and I was like, that's, you know, it's all right. And, but she was just like saying other things. I don't know how to describe it, but like, I was just going like, okay, like, I don't know. Like, are you spiritual? Cause she was just like, I is, can't wait to go here. No, you literally won't even be able to guess this. I is swear she a Jehovah's God. witness. No, she's not religious, like not religious at all. But she was just saying things like, Oh, I haven't been to this Indian restaurant in so long, but it feels like it could be the first time. I don't know if you understand that. And I was like, well, if you like have a lot of experiences and you come back, it could feel like the first time. Like I was like going like abstract, you know what I mean? And so I get there and she looks the same, like looks the same in her pictures. And I sit down and she starts like, we start talking and things are like, all right, she's, you know, a little like super, actually super presumptuous. She's like, has that kind of negative energy, which is already I'm like, oh, this is off. Like you can tell this girl's been slighted in some way, shape or form. And she's just a negative, just like a negative deli anyways. And she starts talking about her epilepsy. And, um, and I was like, dang, that's crazy. And she goes, she goes, that's not even the crazy part. She's like, the crazy part is I have no memories. I was what? Like, uh, it's like when she has a seizure or she, just in general, she had a major seizure and lost her fucking memories. So you were on like 50 first dates. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. 50 first fucking dates. And, um, she was like, yeah, I lost all my fucking memories um and then they slowly came back and she's like I don't really remember 2015 to like right before COVID happened oh that sucks nothing nothing yeah but she said it like so matter of fact she's like yeah I don't have any memories (laughs) just so (laughs) like not not a single one (laughs) like there's a way she said it you guys it's it was it was the most bizarre thing I've ever like come across and I'm like such an open person but I was like this is like this is next level. So when she was saying she ha- like doesn't like it's like the first time going to this Indian restaurant, but it's just the first fucking time for her. Yeah, girl was not joking. Girl was not time. playing around. And like I was like just like some like words and things like that. Like I said the word like BIPOC, and she's like, "What's that?" Oh, like stuff like that. Like was so interesting. Um, yeah, and so like yeah, part of me was like you know, oh, oh, wow, like, I have to, like, say what this is, and this, and stuff like that, but, yeah, homegirl got a lot going on, yeah, that's she, doesn't have, she doesn't got memories, um, I mean, I have, like, plenty of memory loss, like, there are big chunks of my life that I don't remember, but, like, to not have any, yeah. I feel like that's got to be horrifying, she's pretty chill with it, well, yeah. I think maybe it's one of those things, it's, like, I mean, you don't know what you don't know, True. so, like, I think as outsiders being, like, if we had lost the last four years of our life, like that'd be, that'd be really upsetting. That'd be so sad, but like, she doesn't know cause she doesn't remember it. So I, I mean, I guess that's, that's better. No, true. Yeah. I mean, it's just hard. Like, what do you say on a first date when someone's like, yeah, I like have no memories. And I'm like, I am, I'm like, I apologize. I was like, that sucks. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. You have no memories. You could show them all of your favorite things and they would have to come into it with a, with a fresh mind about it, you know? Yeah. could watch a documentary on the 2000s, 2010, one of like the CNN ones of the decades. Oh my god, days. you could you could show her like <clears throat> old Black Eyed Peas music that just like absolutely went the fuck off. I could I be like, like this is a that. new this is like a new song that I found. <laughs> it's like 5 really, years old. <laughs> I my think I, by Black Eyed Peas was before its time. Truly I, was. I, it should be the only fans anthem. Yeah. But even if she like didn't have any memories or had epilepsy, she was still a little bit of a nut. Not gonna lie. Well, I think it. There's a lot of like that's really sad and that's <clears throat> super fortunate. It does, you know, it gives you a very fresh perspective on life. But I think you have to, you know, that's not something that you have to sign up for to go along with on that mm-hmm. journey. You know, I think it's it's gonna yeah. take a, a specific <clears throat> person, and that's okay. Yeah, real specific, because, I don't know, she's a negative Nelly, super presumptuous. I, like, got into argu- an argument with her on a first date, because she was just, like, you know when people say, like, things are like this, and their opinions, and you're, oh, like, no, yeah. not always like mm. that, or no, not a-. She was a person, because she was, like, pan, and she was, like, I would never date another lesbian, and I was, like, 
you know, I have a lesbian in my bio, right? Why did you go on my first date? It was just because she got flack from the lesbian community for being pan. And then, you know, she was like, she just had very bizarre beliefs that like, were just like, I'm like, no, I don't know. They were just, it was just fucking weird. And she was just like, right? Like, right? And I was like, no, no. I like this. Like my real face was like, no. (laughs) <laughs> I mean I guess like if she doesn't remember like the last like four or five years she kind of missed the opportunity where the LGBT community kind uh, of true and I wanted to it a lot more I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt I really did but there were like some things that I was like this bitch is always like this like the memories are no memories like she got she got some stuff going on um and I made up an excuse my cat had to have medication and I came out of the bathroom. I was like, I had to go to the bathroom. I came out. She was not at the booth anymore. I didn't know what the fuck she was she for like left. five seconds. I literally walk out and I look and I'm like, oh, she left. I guess I don't have to have an excuse. And she comes out the front door. Like she walked out to the parking lot and like came back and was like, you ready to go? And I was like, what? Like, I guess. And she was like, do you want to go somewhere else? And I was like, no, my cat, I have to give her heartworm medication. So oh <laughs> bye. I'm, I'm also terrible with the That's excuses rough. to segue <clears throat> out of like a bad date. I literally told this one girl, I was like, I'm just not emotionally available to kiss you right now. Like, I'm just mentally not there to do it. I'm sorry. I mean, I it like, is you true. should probably go. It is true. But I got three messages from her two yesterday and one today. And she was like wanting feedback. It was like, it was like a fucking interview. And she's like, Hey, how did I do? (laughs) And then she was like, and then the second one was about the date. I mean, I'm like, what else could you have fucking meant? And then she was like, she sent me something and I didn't even respond today because I just deleted it. I blocked her number and I unmatched her, which doesn't really happen to me, but I'm just like, man, like you just don't ask for feedback on a day. Like, I don't owe you that, man. This isn't a fucking interview. Interviews don't even owe you that. I'm just like, this is too much. I need to go back to not being on the dating apps. Dating apps ain't it. I'm telling you. No. So that's my crazy story. How do you organically find lesbians in public? Like, do we need like a certain like mating call at this point? I mean, it's usually college. I don't, I mean, right after college was Rona for me, so... If, you, if I didn't know him before, I'm probably not going to know during a pandemic. You know what I mean? Apparently, the only energy I was giving out was twink. So I only got <laughs> hit on by gay men still to this day. I don't know. I'm just not hanging out in gay spaces. I'm not hanging out in any spaces besides this fucking house. Sure. I mean, you could go to Texas. Everything's open there. I don't understand how, like, one of the states with the biggest population is just, like, fine. 100% open. Yeah. Like, did, did, did they not Because Texas, they don't think they're a part of America. They didn't want to be a part of America. They were going to be, like, their own country. That's how radical Texas is. And, I mean, they, they're they about to. Isn't, aren't they going? Aren't they going under or something? Oh, are you talking about, like, the fault line? Aren't they, like, going under? I feel like they're sinking or something. What are we I talking about they were right just, now? Like, California. From- oh. Speaking of seceding, did you see that tweet? So the first one I saw, it was like, you are never going to guess what prompted this tweet. And it was retweeting this like Republican piece of shit. And he said, like, Republicans need to secede. And like, you know how Twitter is like, you can only see the retweet and, you know, the tweet that they had retweeted. And then to find the third one, you have to go click on it. Right. So I go click on it. And it was the fucking potato head thing. And I was like, this is what did it. This is what did it. Okay. Holy shit. Tell me about this potato head thing. Just taking out the mister. When did that even happen? Like last week, the Hasbro <laughs> was like, yeah, it's okay. now just potato head. Like didn't change anything out. Like you can still get the mustache and the purse for your potato head. But they're rebranding it as just potato head instead of like Mr. or Mrs. Potato Head. And like conservatives are like losing their shit over a potato. So... <laughs> Potato, potato. And like children from like a toy that's like three to five year old. Right. Like, I'm sorry. Are you guys going to go buy potato heads now? Like, is it impacting your life that much that you feel like you need to secede over this? Oh my God. I mean, they must, they probably have like a shrine just to Mr. and Miss Potato Head in their house. That's what they make it fucking sound like. I swear to God. 
And like they just while doing that, excuse. they were probably the ones that when Barbie decided to like, you know, put out different sizes and different, you know, um, shades to represent like minorities and in, in all shades and colors. They're probably the ones that were like, this isn't the original Barbie, you know, oh, yeah. shit like that. Oh, yeah. Like, Well, the original Barbie is racist. Undercover bigotry is just like so fun, you yeah. know? Like, like, not, these are preserving old toys. And by doing this, you're tarnishing them. It's like, no, fuck you. It is the same. They didn't change anything except the goddamn name. And people are losing their shit over yeah. it. Yeah, Be inclusive. It's called inclusivity, fucker. We should figure. My mom's right. now trying to talk to me about how gas prices have gone up. So that means Joe Biden that. is a terrible president. And I'm like, what? Go suck my dad's balls a little bit harder because you don't know anything about politics, Lisa. You have a GED. You got it once I was like already in like almost done with elementary school. Like go pop out some more kids. Like you don't know anything about this other than like the Fox News brainwash my dad talks about with you. Okay. One, just for everyone listening, you can be an intelligent <laughs> person with a GED instead of a high school diploma. Two, though, not Trump supporters, but <laughs> no, they are she is mutually exclusive. So. <laughs> I also just find it funny because during the time of the election, she would always be like, don't bring up stuff with your dad. And now they just feel the need to like throw it in my face. And I was like, oh, I just find it funny now. I had to keep my mouth shut. But now you want to come at me knowing that I'm a liberal. Oh, my parents. Well, no, because it's the same silent. thing. silent. My parents have been real fucking silent for the last few months. And it's hilarious. I, see, I, at least they're not like seeing what Joe Biden's doing now and being like, see, I bet you wish you would have voted for Trump. Like, no. No, the, my, my dad will still no. bitch about it. He'll still bitch about the gas prices and all that shit. That's so my parents' not, only do it. debate. Do it. It's the gas prices. I was like, how Sorry. like there's like discrimination like acts and things going in like place and there's a lot bigger things moving than just like gas prices like gas prices this big of an issue compared to everything else that is socially and like globally helping mm-hmm. us like we got back into the Paris Accord like that's important like we burnt that bridge and now we're like I think- Yeah, I think, I mean, I I definitely obviously think Joe Biden was the better option, but I still, we have to hold him accountable for his wrongdoings as well. And I think, and I think that's something that like a lot of Trump supporters just, they just don't understand because they view Trump as like a movie star, like you're a fan of them. Like you shouldn't be a fan of any (laughs) politician, you know, that's not why they're there. They're not not there. fan of you. Right. Yeah, they're not a fan of you. They're not there to entertain you. They're there to do the best they can to make your country better. Like, if they do wrong, you should hold them accountable for that. And, like, I think a lot of people are, and it's just not translating over to the other side that, like, hey, someone you supported can do good and bad, and you need to recognize both. But circling back to Potato Head here real quick. Um, I just think it's kind of funny that these people that are all upset about pronouns are now upset that a potato doesn't have a gender. Yep. It's a potato. We eat it. Or do my, or is my French fry a girl or boy when I put it in my mouth? Well, they're like, they're all arguing about. Like, Mr. Potato Head has a mustache, so he's a mister. One. First of all. Yeah, you, you go on. There are plenty of women with mustaches, okay? Why mm-hmm. do you think the laser hair treatment industry is thriving? Yeah. Okay. And also, like, you are just blatantly admitting that gender is a social construct in your argument. Yep. After saying for how long that, like, it's what's between your legs. Like, okay, so what's between Potato Head's legs then? More potato? Interesting. My God. It's just the latch that is, has all the accessories to be boy or girl. Mr. I mean, Potato technically, is both, and neither. Technically, it is his ass. So, I just like asshole. You, the male's G spot is in their butt. So, if we're gonna go back to God, God must have been gay. He knew what he was doing. Or Mr. Potato Head has a prostate up there somewhere. I think it's somewhere that one hat he there. never uses. It's probably that one. I will say though, for the, special occasions. Yeah, I will say, though, the mustache, although it is this, like, coveted thing, you think of Mr. Potato, you think of the mustache, you can take the fucking mustache off. It's just another accessory. I think 
potato head can be whatever they want to be because it's a fucking potato and if you're up in arms about it you need to get a fucking life i'm sorry there's it's not that interesting but the fact that people are so upset about it is hilarious i just thought i like the the guy that the oh the wacky waving (laughs) inflatable arm man wait that just reminds me of Alana putting one in the office and Hillary Clinton <laughs> came and brought one too. Yeah. It really boosts office morale. Guys, Frankie is... This is another reason I have been smoking all day is Frankie is spending the night at the hospital because she's getting spayed. Scared. I fucking hate that. Like, that was so scary. She'll be okay. I mean, and then she won't get pregnant and it'll be great. Don't worry. Yeah. She won't get preggers or get uterine cancer or whatever. Ovarian cancer. I hope it all goes well. No, me too. No baby. She's okay. going to look funny in a cone, though. Does she have to wear a cone when she gets spayed? I think yeah. so. So it should be funny to see how she's going to eat her food because she's going to have big difficulties trying to put the cone with I'll her probably just put food. the food in the cone. And then she just has to go like this. Honestly, just 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 it goes like this. Just go like the top. God, that sounds like that Saw movie where the guy's head is in the in the cube of water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Ew. Okay, so switching gears, uh, coming out of Black History Month, coming into Women's History Month, Bree, do you have any hot takes on Women's History Month? Women's History Month is racist. So do we want to? Do we want to work on a, on another segue? I would. I would. Women's I would, I would history racist. is racist. If okay, so switching gears. Uh, Susan B. Has- Anthony is a racist, declared racist, self-declared racist. Disappointing, but not surprising. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what who everyone talks about, right? Suffragette, blah blah blah, and she was a fucking racist. And I think that a lot, like I always championed you know, Women's History Month until I realized it only benefited white women at the time. They were not, it was not intersectional, all of women's rights. They were just making it, well, like, you know, we can't have, you know, black women or Hispanic women votes and like no one will like pass that. So we like can only make it white women. It was super I mean, up. even if you want to go even further on that, they almost didn't want to put lesbian women in that because feminists, most of the time we're assumed to just be a bunch of lesbians which is not the case Mm -hmm. Gloria Steinman was actually an advocate and pushed for lesbian advocacy and all of that kind of things like if you watch Miss America like one of the things they were talking about um it was one of their like magazines and the guy was trying to say okay well you have a lesbian on the cover like you can't add additional things to it like I allowed you to do that mm-hmm. and that's just not don't what she was doing for and like even when she would go and speak at these like LGBTQ like things she'd be like I'd rather hear from like us than her just being and giving big speeches and stuff like that. Yeah, and I thought Gloria Steinem was in the community, but she isn't. She's not. She's straight. I wish that she was. Yeah, I feel like she she dabbled in the lady pool for sure. She definitely dabbled. She's a journalist. I feel. Most listen, I feel like any healthy person experiments just you know a little bit. There you go. You know, it know. was the sixties and seventies. Everyone was, was experimenting with everything. So hot. everybody was high and experimenting. It was a better time. Exactly. Oh, now I we're just would... high and depressed. Lily Tomlin. Have you seen pictures of Lily Tomlin? She, there was this one picture on the documentary "Feminists: Where Are They Now?" on Netflix. Beautiful documentary. If you guys haven't learned about it, I'm probably going to put it in the description below because it really helped me learn about the women's movements over the years. But there is one with her and she looks like a fucking boss. She's in a turtleneck and a fucking leather jacket. Oh my God. Her and her brother were gay. Yeah, they were. And she, she did talked- say that her brother had it a little bit worse than she did because it's not it's not taboo for girls to be tomboys and such like growing up as like Men, if they're more feminine, there's a bigger stigma around that because it's like, ooh, you better play football and like fucking testosterone and like don't put on makeup, don't like paint your nails. Like, yeah, the, it's interesting that there's like a different view on it between men and women because, like, when, obviously, I was a 
tomboy and like there are plenty of girls that are tomboys and like the general consensus with that is like oh they'll grow out of it you know wait till they hit puberty yeah but like when a little boy is being feminine the first instinct is like put them in sports like make them play baseball or football or like you know take away the girlier toys that they're playing and, with and like I don't understand that like they're it's all children let them just like grow how they want to grow but even if you are going to like enforce that like heteronormative stereotype why is it focused on like redirecting boys but girls will grow out of it I have a theory and I think that is where toxic masculinity comes from yeah I mean I have a theory and it's like I think because femininity is always bad because women were always told to be good girls which implied that they were not we were not very good girls you know what I mean we had so many different rules and things we couldn't show anger we couldn't show all these things because they were masculine and they weren't proper and they were inappropriate but uh when you're younger before you hit puberty i think that it's okay for women to be tomboys because yeah masculinity is the superior thing so it's literally women as minorities acting like boys for that time being was okay but then once you hit puberty, it's like now you have to act like a lady because now you're a woman and now you have all of these other things that you have to look out for. And like, you know, your time is up. Yeah. Now you have well, sacks of fat on your <clears throat> chest and apparently now your shoulder is seductive. Make that make sense. Yeah. I mean, honestly, um, our, our girl, Bad Bitch Baker out here, Ooh. love, shout out to you. Um, she made a video about there's that one country song that like is going around tiktok where like girls will dress up as quote republicans and like make fun of them but she was saying like if you live in the south a lot of women do use that as like a a power song for some reason which like i don't really understand but um her point there was that in these more country more conservative areas where like the women are more subdued under the men in the household women are still held in higher regard than feminine women I just it's so interesting to me that if you're gay and do these things then like there's a problem you should be more feminine like if you're doing them as an adult but these quote country men will also praise women as an adult that can do these things and like to do these things but are not gay like hunting and stuff like that yeah, right, like, a lot of southern like women are more so fishing. into stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 once again just like fucking. It's a bootstraps a- woman. It's a fucking woman yeah. that wears snakeskin boots with fucking sweaty feet. She has a you know a fucking baby with no shirt on on one hip. You know what I mean? She's got like the fucking water hose on the other one. She's spraying her other kid down because her other kid has mud all over because he's a fucking idiot. That's, that's, that, that's, yeah, that's a Southern woman. As long as she wants to take like five minute pipe, okay in their book. Yeah. It's, it's, once again, it's just that thinly veiled bigotry. And we've talked about this before. Like, I don't want people to be bigoted, but like, if you're going to be a bigot, just say it with your chest. Like, honestly, it's so annoying. Like, we know you have these views you making these excuses for why you have them and why you view different situations differently is it's just not believable we all know why just say it it's gonna save everybody a lot of time and frustration yeah do you remember that one girl that like we called out on one of like my instagram reels and like she tried to come at the definition of homophobia (laughs) oh yeah Yeah. and she literally just like went in circles and literally by definition of what exactly she was saying met homophobia but she's like no i'm just scared of like lesbians and i'm like no no no. uh, it it was that she was she's like i'm not scared of them phobia means fear that's the same thing like have you never heard about us have you never heard of semantic change it doesn't mean that you're scared of gays like boo you know what like it just means you don't like us and you're saying you don't like yeah I'm, you are homophobic. I literally was just like say it with, say the chest. with your chest that's what we messaged her yeah <laughs> if you're gonna be homophobic at least be fucking just proud of it, it. just at least be it. out just at least be out there it's just that's passive it. aggressive homophobia i i yeah. much rather enjoy overt homophobia than you being passive aggressive about it like be right. fucking confident like just be but don't be an insecure homophobic be a fucking if confident you're gonna do it you can do you have anything to be you confident right. about anything. Yeah. You know Nothing's what I mean? worse than an insecure homophobe, you know? Seriously. 
fucking insecure little fucker. Say with your face that you hate me. Women's History Month. <laughs> we I love women's off. history. Jumping back in. Because we can't do something else. But we didn't really talk. We didn't. <laughs> I know. Uh, yay, yay, women. Um, abortion should be legal in all states. Should get psychological testing to see who should be able to procreate. But then that becomes a gray area. Of then you're getting, you're getting really close to eugenics, my guy. And that's a no-go. <sighs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a no-go. That's a no-go, buddy. <laughs> no-go on the eugenics. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, guys. Question with the queer segment. This is um, the part of the series where we answer a question that a listener has submitted. And so today, our question, also, if you want to submit a question, you can put it in my Q&A on TikTok, and you can also send me a DM. Um, but this is the question that I got. It's kind of a different one than we usually get. Um, I'm not going to say their name because I don't know if they want me to, but the question reads, a gayest question, food for thought for a gay, if you will. Do you think it's offensive when straight people ask, how did you know you were gay? Being a 28-year-old lesbian out for a decade now, I've been asked that about a thousand times. I personally don't take offense simply because if someone didn't share their how they were, knew they were gay story with me, I wouldn't have known for myself due to lack of representation probably. On the flip side, I have a lot of queer friends who get really upset by this question. The default being, I was always gay. How dare you question me? I do have to agree it's annoying when someone asks you um, to tell them your story, but their response is invalidating your experience trying to disprove your gayness. What do you think? I, I don't <laughs> think it's offensive in any way. Like, I wouldn't be offended if somebody mm-hmm. asked me to. My first thought would be the fact that you're asking me means that you may have something stern in your brain that's like how would I know though like maybe I'm thinking these things but how would I know if I was so I think you know there's a lot of good things about giving somebody the benefit of the doubt there because plenty of people do spend all of their adolescence and a good chunk of their adulthood believing that they're straight and so they may just be trying to figure it out if not I get the genuine curiosity Because it's something you don't experience. I think gay people or queer people in general, you know, they they spend their whole lives up until they realize, like, thinking that they're straight, trying to be straight. So that's something that we can kind of connect to in the fact that, like, we know this wasn't right because we tried this. These people have never tried to be gay because that's not the default for straight people. You know, they, they grow up in a world that, is run by straight people. That's, you know, that's what we see in the media. So there's no need to experiment if that's not something that you genuinely feel like with a queer person. I think it's good to just kind of take that question in stride because I don't think if somebody's asking that most of the time that it would be anything malicious. I think it's moreover just probably genuine curiosity unless it's in a, in a derogatory sense, but then I don't know why you're talking to that person in the first place. I don't know. That's yeah. just a take. I think I mean, like I, you have a choice to educate. You can educate if you want to, but you don't owe anyone an explanation. And I think right. it's up to you to discretion. Like if someone's just really curious and they're like, hey, like, how did you end up finding that out? Like if you're someone who's genuinely interested in your well-being and they genuinely know want to know about you, it's going to sound a lot different than like, so like how do girls have sex? Like, how did you know? Right. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that where you're just like, how did you know you were straight? Like you can be quippy. You can choose not to act. You'd be like, Hey guys, I don't really talk about this in my private life, you know, whatever. Like you don't owe anyone anything. You don't owe anyone education. I, and when I like came out and I was like a gay bee, I thought I needed to now educate. You know what I mean? Cause I think to some degree, no. like, you know, people that are different, right. Or like a little bit different than the majority of people. And there's so many gay people I think that like, there's a reason for it, right? Like it, it can help people change. It can help families realize things when they have like, oh, like someone in their backyard that's, you know, different and stuff like that. It helps out a lot. But like, I would say I, I wanted to, I thought I was supposed to educate, you know, I thought I was supposed to do this. And I don't have to do shit. No one does. I feel like I don't feel as much that I need to educate unless I truly think someone like is just curious about me in general, like me as a person. And then I'll like talk about it or they can just listen to this podcast. Just send them the link. Yeah. Just send yeah. me the fucking link. link in bio. Here you go. You know what? Getting just sidetracked for one moment. 
Um, one of my sorority sisters. Yeah, no. I wasn't a sorority, no. and it was awful. And I think Greek life should be dismantled. Um, but aside from that, I needed somewhere to live, so I was in a sorority. And one of the sorority sisters um, that I had reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and said that she listened to the podcast and thought it was really, really good. And I was just so astounded that like a straight person took the time to listen to a topic that doesn't really have anything to do with them. You know, this is a, it's a safe space that we create for queer people and took, they took time out of their day to listen to it and to educate themselves. And I just, I really appreciated that. And I do think more straight people should try to do stuff like that. So I think sending, sending somebody that asks, how did you know you were gay? The link to this podcast is an excellent option. Yeah, I've had a couple of friends and I mean, they're not like close friends. Well, no, they are close friends, but like, I don't know. It was something to where they were like, they literally said, I love listening to this. Like, it's such a good podcast. And it's not because it's like LGBTQ plus, it's just a good podcast. And then like I had a coworker, a previous coworker that was like, this was a really interesting episode and, and all this stuff. And that's like a cis straight guy. Um, so I think people like the podcast just because it's, it's good and they might learn a little bit of something. But yeah, I mean, it is really a conundrum. Yeah, after my sister was on for like the holiday special, she was like listening to it while she was at work. And now like a couple people that she works with. It's nice to see that some hetero people want to educate themselves and aren't so close-minded about I agree. Um, queer which people, is just so cool I'm like oh it's God. nice to have allies people listen to me and I don't even remember what I say every episode like, I make yeah, you sound good don't worry <laughs> I know you do I get off of an episode and sometimes I'm like did I black out because I'll just fucking talk and not know what I said we got it taken care of it comes out okay you know I believe it <laughs> All right, guys, this is a lightning round. We're actually going to play a this or that because we have three of us on here. Chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Chocolate. Chocolate. Apple or Spotify? Apple Music, Apple. baby. Spotify. I get a deal with it with my Verizon, so why would I pay more for Spotify if I get it for free with Verizon? I'm on a student account. I get Showtime, Hulu with ads. And Spotify for five bucks a month. I'm not even a fucking student anymore. I just stopped liking system. Spotify after one time an ad for STDs started playing in the middle of like a uh, hookup one time in my life. And <laughs> I was, nope. Spotify really read the room on there. that one. It did. And I was like, this is a sign. I gotta go. Okay. So big picture or detail oriented? Okay. What does that exactly mean? However... I need a blonde like, explanation. Like when you're planning something, like you're planning a trip, do you, are you just kind of like, we're going to go here, we're going to stay here, things are going to work out? Or are you like, no, we That's need- That's big like, picture, right? Yeah. Detail-oriented would be like, what time are we checking in? Are we going to go to breakfast when we get that? You know, like that kind of stuff. I mean, I feel given our Chicago trip, we all probably should have the same answer. Big picture. Big picture gang. <laughs> big picture. I big just picture like to see where the day takes me. And we're happy doing it, which is great because yeah. if we had one person that wasn't, then they would have had an awful time. Truth or dare? Dare. I like I'm truth. truth. Yeah. True. I'm truth. Dares require you to like get up and like do stuff. I'm just erratic. Crazy. So obviously I do a dare. If you tell me I won't do something, I'm going to do it. Honestly, it depends who you're playing with too. Usually truth, but like some people just be too much. So I guess dare. But <laughs> their truth be too truthful. <laughs> Some of them are. You always have that. You always have that, like one person in the group that you know that they're gonna come at you with some fuck shit. So, like, no dare. I so, sometimes people are trying to opportunity. Some people try to ruin friendships during Truth or Dare. They're like, if you had to kill one person in this room, who would it be? I'm like, Jesus Christ! I'll just can I lick the cabinets or something? I'll take that. Ride or de- <laughs> ride or destination. What does this mean? Like, am I riding in the car or am I driving? No, I, I, I feel like it was more of a philosophical, like, do you focus on where you're going or like how you're getting there? Do you know what I mean? Like, like do you journey, enjoy the ride like or is it destination? Ju- yeah. No, nah, I, I enjoy the ride better than the destination. I would, I would say the ride also. It's the, I would it, like it, to it say is the also ride. a music combination. If you're in a bad group of people in the car, 
probably not going to enjoy it. However, love ballads all the way. My achievement ass really likes the destination. I feel like that's fair. And I feel like you could take this in a lot of ways, yeah. you know? I want to be a journey girl, though. She took a midnight train. Yeah, I would love to be the midnight train. But take the train at midnight to ruin my really? life for journey. <laughs> I don't know. That's Sketchy. a little too much Have of you a rode journey. The, the the L in Chicago at midnight. Mm-mm. Scary. That's a stabbing. I don't want that journey. I want the destination real quick. No <laughs> way. Sometimes people will like share their like joint with you. It just depends on where you're going. I and feel like this question it. went in a direction for me. That that's fine. I did not intend it to go. It, it did. <laughs> I was talking about like. Are you going to enjoy the in-between time or are you just like focus on what you're doing, where you're going, you know, but we got the to in-between. stabbings on the L somehow. <laughs> and I don't know why I expected any different. <laughs> the L word, Tina or Jenny. I have Tina. no idea who that is. As far as like, who's the worst? Mm-hmm. Tina. She yeah. got with a man. At, she started like, where's the spice? Uh, if you're gonna be shitty, at least with, be like, spicy. A man. If she's gonna be with Bet Porter, you're gonna go online and talk to like Big Dick sixty nine and not even know what this dude looks like. He's like, yeah, yeah, pipe me right next to her, like in bed. Uh-uh, disrespect, honey, no. It is a disrespect for me. I'll say that one also. Then last one, cat or dog? I like I like I like bunnies. I like bunnies. And good night to people who like bunnies and gender <laughs> neutral potatoes. That's me. <laughs> That's just the end of the podcast right there. <laughs> That's the closing. Good night. Line. good night to bitches who tie their drawstrings on their hoodies. That was like nice good. Little bow tie. Thank you. And that could have been a question. He's a little fancy. I like the little bow tie. I'm That's not going to lie, guys. I am really glad the whole bow tie craze died down. I think they look stupid on everybody. Oh, the 2015 gays with the bow ties? Uh, I would have been oh one of God. those. I would have been a bow tie gay, 100%. I, so would Jay. Oh, no. I Sorry. went through that stage and I canceled it. I don't want to wear a bow tie or a tie. I want it. Yeah, I want it to be. I just want to have some pasties and I just want to have a low cut unbuttoned shirt. That's what I want to do. So Bree says cats. <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's take us home <laughs> all right <laughs> that's home. it for this episode my queers um i hope you enjoyed this episode if you are not following me on spotify follow on spotify subscribe on youtube we have full video episodes if you were not able to see us see us next time Be you, be queer, stay safe, and we will see you on the next episode.